friends, and welcome to the final episode of the Scratch Art Animal series. You've done so much work to get here and you've done so many different technique building practices that are going to make this a much more successful project with you. Just to name a few, you've gone through and practiced all of the different techniques that you can use to create value rather than just shading with a pencil using your pressure. Then you took those techniques and created them on a much more difficult medium of scratch board. So you went through and used your scratching tool to remove enough of the film to make it a nice smooth transition with all of your values. From there, you took all of these different techniques and practiced it in the cat that we did step by step together. And so you took all of those techniques and applied them while creating a piece of art. Now, this next step is really exciting because you get to choose what you are doing for your final project. So you're going to be able to go through and there's a brainstorm on Teams for you to complete this step. The first step is to choose what picture you would like to work from. And this can be done in your assignment on Teams. You'll just go through and complete the Scratch Art Animal Brainstorm. And these are some of the options available to you. However, you are able to choose your own photo if it's not provided, as long as you have a black or dark background, you have a good amount of dark tones, medium tones, and light tones, and it's a really high quality photo so you can see enough detail to work from. If you do choose your own photo that isn't provided by me, then you'll need to print it on your own, so make sure you have the ability to do that. The picture you select for this portion of the project is really important because we're going to spend some time working on these pieces to make sure that they are to the level that I'm expecting for this unit. So plan on spending a long time looking at this image. So you should choose an animal that maybe has some meaning to you, maybe pick something that is more than just, oh, that's cute. <laughs> so consider if you'd like to give this as a gift or where you would like for it to be hung up permanently. So just some things to keep in mind before you make your final selection. Once you have your picture decided and you are for sure that's what you would like to do, the next step is probably the most important step, which sounds crazy because we aren't even working on the scratch board yet, but you are working on transferring first, which is such an important thing to do correctly. To begin transferring, you're just going to shade in the back of one of your photos and then tape it onto a full-size piece of scratch board. The more detail that you can give yourself during this step, the easier it's going to be as you continue working on this project. So you're going to begin by filling in all of the solid white areas, and you're going to do that with just a sharp pencil or a ballpoint pen or any writing utensil you have that is sharp and has a nice point. So you're gonna go through and fill in all of the solid white areas first. I could go through and while looking at this, I can see that the values change like right around here and that's pretty distinct. So a lot of students tend to just outline value changes and that's not really going to give you very much help. So if I lift my paper, you can see like, okay, well that's the section where it's supposed to be lighter, but I really have no idea how to fill that in lighter. And so that's the point where students would say like, all right, well, I've got this lighter section and I've pretty much outlined it. So now I can just go through and start scratching out lines that are kind of curved in this direction when really something that would give you so much more help than taking the time to outline it is to actually go through and fill in each of these individual little lines. And I know I've been telling you that and I know that it's been something I've said multiple times, but I'm about to show you the difference in how much detail you can be provided if you just take the time to go over the top of this page and do this step because once you've done that you have all of these tiny little lines that show you exactly where you need to scratch so this is going to give you so much more information and you will have so much less guesswork at the end of where these lines need to go so take your time transferring on the fur that's like the shorter sections especially so that you can get each one of these little lines and even like some of these funky little shapes we want to transfer as much information as possible 
right? So that's going to show you exactly where you need to scratch away. And because you're only coloring in the pure white areas first, you'll know that there aren't really as many value transitions in those places. So first, you're just going to go through and fill in all of the solid white details. Now while you're doing this, it's really important that you're thinking through the length of the lines that you're working with. So you should be coloring in each individual little white hair at this point. And it's important that you think about the length of those lines because that really does determine how furry something is. So if you've got really short lines, it makes it look like that fur is closer to the skin of your animal rather than when you've got longer lines and it looks like it's extended. So make sure that you're paying very close attention to the length of the lines of these pure white areas. So we know that we want to fill in our solid white areas and that's just very clear because that's the space that we're going to scratch away. We don't have any complications with that. But filling in medium tones can be a little tricky because if I went through and filled in all of this space because we do need to fill in some texture, right? But we don't want to fill all of this in because that implies that I should scratch all of this away in the exact same amount as white. But this is a nice medium tone. So what I'm going to do when I reach medium tones or places that aren't pure white, so you can sort of see along this edge of the tear duct line, I have a medium tone that I didn't fill in because it wasn't solid white. So I filled in that solid white section underneath it, but now I'm outlining the medium tones or any other changes in value. So I'm just going along and adding those sections so that I know where values change. So for example, down here, I might outline where some of these spots are so that I know where to fill in the medium tones in between them. So I'm just going through and sort of outlining any edges or where values change so that any spaces that are filled in solid white are my brightest areas and I've outlined all of my medium tones to know which direction to fade them in. And this is what it looks like when you lift it up. So that means that all of these areas that are solid would be where I focus on adding my brightest white little lines and then I'm going to transition into a medium tone up against this tear duct line before it turns to black. So that just sort of gives me my outlines of where these values are going to start and end and shows me the difference between my white values versus my medium tone values. As an art teacher, I feel like sometimes kids come up to me and ask me these questions, hoping that there's like one piece of magical information that I can give them that will make this easier for them. And usually for most projects, I do not have a magical piece of advice, but for this one, I do. I have magical advice and it is to take your time transferring because this is the step that gives you all of the detail. This is the step that will help you make it look more realistic. But to make that happen, you have to take the time to transfer. You have to take the time to look at those details on the photo, draw over the top of them, and transfer them onto your scratchboard paper. So that's my magical advice. That's the one thing that's going to make it so much easier for you. And I promise you'll find more success if you take the time to transfer correctly. So go work on that now. For the rest of this project, step-by-step -step tutorial videos are not really going to be helpful for you just because we're all completing different pictures. So from this point on, I would like to just discuss some problems that you might encounter during this part of the project and things that you should be avoiding. The first example I'd like to discuss with you is one that shows how important it is to focus on the length of your lines as you're drawing. So this example shows that it really does make a big difference when you work with the same length of lines all the way around, rather than trying to change the length of your lines throughout your photo. This next example shows that even if you have your lines drawn to the correct length, they also need to be going in the correct direction because the direction of your lines can really make a big difference. And as you can see on this example of a cat, when you've got overlapping lines, especially on the nose 
the bridge of the nose where you can see that crisscross pattern, it makes it look very unrealistic. It shows that this is a drawing and it is not done in a realistic way. So we really want to be paying attention to the direction of our lines as well. Even, for example, the cheek that's on the left hand side, you can see that the hair is going in. It's showing that the lines are going the wrong direction and so it makes it look sort of sunken or like it's not really the shape that it is because the direction of those lines follows the form of that animal and so when the direction is wrong it makes it look like the form is sort of funky as well so make sure you're paying super close attention to the direction of your lines as well in this example, I want to show you something that happens to students all the time throughout this unit, and it goes all the way back to our value scales. And the problem that this example shows is that there are sections of value rather than smooth transitions of value. And so this is something that we're trying to avoid because even when you do have solid sections of a specific value, it often fades into the next value rather than just an abrupt edge. So this is something that shows that the student was struggling with creating a smooth value transition. It is not that the collie in this example had just like solid patches, it's that the value transitions were not smooth enough and that brought the score down. So this is something that you should be avoiding. So we want to make sure all of our transitions are super smooth and fluid. So if you've got any sections that show, that's something that you should go back and work on. The final example I'm going to show you of things that you should be avoiding in your own project is this example where a student forgot to leave space for their dark and medium tones and got really eager to fill it in and filled all of their space in with too much of that light value. And so I just wanted to show you this example because sometimes it is easy to get carried away and to keep going, but with Scratchboard, it's really important to know when you should decide to be done because if you continue adding layer after layer after layer, you're just slowly removing that little black film from the top of that paper. So eventually you're just going to continue removing and removing and it'll keep getting lighter and lighter. And so this is the end result that I would like for you to avoid. This is what should inspire you to make sure that you leave enough space for your dark tones and enough space for your medium tones. So the best way to avoid this is to start at the beginning and go through and fill in all of your white areas. So everything that needs to be pure white, you'll go through and fill that in at the beginning so that after you're done with that step, you know that all of the rest of your space should be closer to a medium tone or black. So that's the best way to avoid this is to make sure that you stop at a good point so don't go too far past that sweet spot where you've got all of your values showing so you just want to make sure you don't go too far past that. Thank you so much for joining me for this entire series. I hope that you had a blast creating your final project and that you made something that you are proud of. So I will see you for our next unit. Thanks for watching!